Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Off This Thing, basically an off-the-cuff video where I uh, I do something kind of unscripted, and the ideas here are going to be imperfect. I hope they have a, a good shelf life, and I hope they age well, um, but the events that I'm talking about are also kind of unfolding, so we'll see how well that happens. Um, let's just dive right on in. Um, we're going to talk about CNN. CNN basically hunted down um, a memer and uh, apparently threatened to blackmail him. Kind of interesting there. Um, the guy who is kind of spearheading that is K-File, at K-File, uh, a.k.a. Andrew Kaczynski. He works for CNN. And uh, if you want to know the full backstory, Sargon of Akkad, Crouton T, Roaming Millennial, Greg Gutfeld, all those people made great videos on the backstory. So they've got the backstory you're looking for. As for the rest of us, let's dive right on in. In no particular order, I just wrote a few ideas kind of scrawled out. Um, number one, this is peak political correctness. What is political correctness? Well, Peter Bogosian um, on Dave Rubin recently noted that political correctness is basically a blasphemy law. It, it tells you what you can and can't say. A blasphemy law is basically a rule about speaking against the ultimate power, speaking against the ultimate sacred. And what is the ultimate power? What is the ultimate sacred? Well, um, according to CNN, they tend to think it's the person in the mirror. Um, they really do not like being criticized or, or memed upon. And um, they hunted this guy down. They figured out who he was and they identified him and kind of threatened to dox him. Um, this brings up point number two. This is frightening. This guy makes a meme, just makes a meme, throws it on Reddit in theory. And he gets contacted by one of the biggest news channels in the country. Um, really, he gets the biggest, one of the biggest multi-billion dollar corporation media guns pointed at his head. And CNN's like, oh yeah, he apologized. Of course he apologized. He doesn't want to get ruined. If you want to see um, how somebody did get ruined, look up Justine Sacco. Her last name spelled S-A-C-C-O. Um, she's a lady who got ruined um, in part by the dogpiling of K-File and others over a tweet. And her life was utterly destroyed. So Google that and, and, and do some research there. Um, but this is a frightening concept for this guy who made this meme. I mean, if you think about it, uh, yes, Paul has come to his rescue. Yes, um, Infowars now has a meme contest for 20 grand about who can make the best meme. Yes, the internet has kind of stood up to CNN, but he doesn't know that at the moment. He doesn't know that when CNN is on the phone and in his email inbox, and he is terrified that these people can destroy his life. And I think something we need to think about here is, does CNN really actually want to send that message? And I think they do. I really don't think they, they um, have any qualms about sending a message of, of fear to people that make memes and that people that they consider to be political enemies. Uh, recently, there's been this idea of we have to rescue free speech from the trolls. My answer is no. Free speech is the trolls, are the trolls, however you want to put that. Kekistanis, trolls, uh, shit posters, these are not people you have to rescue free speech from. They are canaries in the coal mine. And if you can shut up a troll, if you can shut up a white supremacist, if you can shut up a Nazi, if, you, if it becomes acceptable to silence people because of the label they have, it gets more scary because you can take that label and apply it to people you don't like and then shut them up. Case in point, Bunty King, who is not a white supremacist, but it's become more acceptable to shut up white supremacists. And if you can put that label on Bunty, you can shut him up. That's how that works. Moving on, point number three. CNN is doing activism here. They're not doing journalism. They're doing activism. What are they activating for? What are, what are they marching for? Well, they're marching in the name of their own journalistic integrity and quality. They literally took the time to hunt this guy down because they think a meme hurt their image. Uh, newsflash to CNN, whatever this guy's meme did to your image, the 2016 election cycle did far more. The self-inflicted damage that CNN has done to their own image um, is just vastly outweighs whatever a meme could do. And and think about this for a second. Andrew Kaczynski, K-File, this guy is not free and he's not working for eight and a half bucks an hour. They paid him a lot of money and they paid his little team of ex-Buzzfeeders and some editor a lot of money to pass this through and to get this online. So they did actually invest in this kind of activism. Um, point number four if CNN fires Andrew Kaczynski over this, I'm not convinced it'll be the right move. Now, Crouton T, uh, a guy I really like and respect, you need to go listen to his videos. Um, he thinks they need to fire Kaczynski in the name of journalistic integrity. I completely agree with that concept. Now, here's the problem I have. 
Um, I think them firing Kathy Griffin was a bad move, too. And here's why. When they fired Kathy and if they fire Kaczynski, they are not doing it to clean up their act. Don't buy that for a second. They are cleaning up the ugly face of their act. They are cleaning up symptoms of their act. They are not cleaning up their act itself. They are cutting loose baggage and people that have become a liability. People that put a little bit too much of an honest face on their intentions, on their agenda, and on their mentality, on their attitudes. I don't think CNN has any problem with what Kaczynski did. I don't think they had any problem with what Kathy Griffin did. What they have a problem of, it's a little bit too obvious. I think CNN kind of did some virtue firings, virtue signal firings. That's that's my problem with uh, them firing these people, is that really nothing has changed. Um, point number five, this would have gone away if they had ignored it. I mean, it just would have vanished into thin air. Even with President Trump retweeting it, it would have been gone in a week. Instead, by fighting it and by really going off the rails with the blackmail thing, they managed to mobilize Pol, they managed to mobilize Kekistan, they managed to mobilize Prison Planet, and now you've got a $20,000 meme contest going. A buddy of mine pointed out, like, hey, a lot of people aren't even fulfilling the requirements of the contest. They just want to get the meme out there, the anti-CNN meme out there, and inflict the damage. What does that tell you about how people feel about CNN? Uh, Point number six, this is not news. Romy Millennial touched on this. She's very just right on the money. Memes are not news. Memes are never news. Memes are scrawls on the bathroom walls of the internet. You're not supposed to take them seriously. They might be silly. They might be funny. They might be offensive. But it's the internet. No one actually cares. And, And instead of doing news and journalism, CNN made a point to hunt this guy down. And uh, I think that says a lot of how they view trolls. Um... And if they wanted to hunt one memer down just to prove they could and send a message, um, if these people are into the business of selling fear occasionally, why not sell it to political enemies? I mean, that's just another question to kind of ask and kind of ponder. I think finally, the, uh, the last thing I have here is what should the media do? What should the media be? What should the media look like? I think the media's job is to report facts. It's to report events. It's to question the narrative of every single politician, not just the ones they like or don't like. And um, they don't do that. If you want to read a fantastic book, um, it's one that I read in grad school for a uh, like a news and international conflict or media and international conflict class. And the book is called News, The Politics of Illusion. It's written by Lance Bennett. It's really great. You should read it. He is a bit of a lefty. Um, I don't think he's a full-blown progressive, though, but it's a really good look at what the news is, what it should be, where legacy media is going, how framing works, how bias works, all that good stuff. I encourage you to check it out, and uh, hopefully it'll help you develop your opinions on the matter. I hope this has helped a little bit uh, with your opinions and given you something to think about. I know it has for me. And uh, just thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time.